Hey everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm very, very super happy to have you here with me today because today is a day I have been looking forward to for weeks and weeks and weeks. I am going to be starting some seeds. Yes, you heard me right. I am starting some seeds in my zone 3B in the interior of British Columbia, Canada at the end of December. And the reason that I am doing that is because my husband and I have been building a grow room, or I should say my husband. I've done a little bit of it, but he has done the brunt of the work for sure. I've been building a grow room in our basement and it is just about finished. It's close enough that I can start some seeds now and within four or five days I can get them onto the shelves under the grow lights in the grow room. But the cool thing about a lot of the seeds that I'm going to be starting today is they can be started whether you have a grow room like me or whether you just have a window in your kitchen and you live in an apartment. These seeds are don't take up a ton of space, but they can produce quite a bit of food for you. I will link all the seed companies that I am going to be mentioning today down in the show notes for you. I'm also going to put a link to a garden planning calculator that it's put out by my friends at Seeds for Generations down in the show notes for you, and it is a free planner. And what else am I gonna do for you in the show notes? Hmm. Actually, the other thing that I can do is I will link a comprehensive list that I put together of all of the seeds that I purchased in 2022 um, that I have over on my website. I will be doing a comprehensive list for 2023, but we're right in the middle of revamping my website right now. So that list won't be out for probably two more weeks. Without further ado, let's get into all of the seeds that we're gonna be planting. The ones that I am most excited about right now are all of my dwarf and micro dwarf tomatoes. So if you haven't heard of micro dwarf tomatoes before, they're really little tiny tomato plants. They only grow about yay big, and they, but they produce a quite a prolific number of tomatoes. I've been growing these for the last couple of years and I'm always shocked at the number of tomatoes that these little tiny plants can produce. The reason that I'm going to do these is because I actually wanna get tomatoes off of them early, so in the spring. Um, and indoors. So normally what I do is I start all my seeds, my tomato seeds during the second week of March, and then I put them into my greenhouse. This year, I'm going to try growing them indoors to see if we can't get some tomatoes in the early spring. The really cool thing about micro dwarf tomatoes is obviously because they're really tiny, you don't need a ton of growing space for them. You can grow them in the winter time. They do require some supplementary light. They won't do super well, <clears throat> excuse me, just in a, on a windowsill. So a little bit of light in a windowsill with a, a little grow light on them would be perfect. But um, you can grow them on a deck as long as you get sufficient sunlight or in your house over the winter time. I get all my micro dwarf tomato seeds from Ash's Heirloom Seeds. And she's fantastic. I've been buying from her for years. I buy lots of other seeds from her too, but the micro dwarf tomatoes are her speciality. The other thing that we're going to grow are some microgreens. This is another one that if you have a small space that you can grow and we're going to do peas and these ones are from West Coast Seeds. This t-shirt is from West Coast Seeds. I love it, they just sent it to me and I think it's fabulous. Um, so we're gonna do the microgreens and then the other thing we're gonna do is some sprouting seeds. I'm gonna show you guys how to sprout seeds and sprouting seeds are fantastic because all you need is a mason jar and a little bit of water. You don't even need light. Having a window that you can put them in so you can get some little green leaves is, um, is beneficial, but you could even do it if you couldn't and you would still get something that you could eat, which I think is fantastic. So we're gonna do all these things. The first thing that of course we need are some kind of tray to put everything in. And for my tomatoes, I'm going to start them in these little cells. For most of my seed starting, I actually use um, soil blocks and I have a couple of videos on that from previous gardening years that I can put it down in the show notes for you too But because I'm only going to be starting a few today I decided to do the cells rather than get out my soil block maker One of the things that I always do for my trays when I'm going to be planting indoors I don't do this for um, planting outdoors. I just leave them out in the Sun for a couple of hours, but for planting indoors I sterilize my my trays and my planting cells so I use hot soapy water as hot as I can stand and a little bit of bleach just to make sure that I kill off anything that might be living that survived over um, since I last used them from the previous growing season. This is a really, really important thing to do if you're planting inside. I find that 
when I'm growing indoors in a situation that's that's kind of optimal for growth, it's not just optimal for the growth of the seedling itself, it's also optimal for things like funguses and bacteria and stuff like that. So you really wanna make sure everything's as sterile as possible. Using sterilized potting soil is always, of course, a really good idea for indoor growing. I use basic SunGrow organic potting soil and I use that for everything. I use it for making my soil blocks, I use it for starting my seeds, and I use it for potting up when I go from my smaller cells into bigger containers. I just use it across the board. Over on my website, I do have a list of all of the seeds that I grew in my 2022 garden. I will be making a list for 2023 because there's a whole bunch of new seeds that I'm growing, but um, we're right in the process of revamping the website right now. So the new list won't be out probably until the third week of January. But the list that I do have on there is kind of all the basic stuff that I always plant in my garden year after year. So I'm only going to be starting seven tomato plants and I got a little over exuberant with the um, number of cells that I prepared. Oh, I forgot, I'm also gonna do lettuce. That's the other thing. Our lettuce is absolutely outrageously expensive right now. And so um, I wanna grow some lettuce because we don't wanna be buying lettuce anymore. So I'll fill the rest of those cells with lettuce. And actually I'll do just one tray of microgreens right now and the other tray with lettuce because lettuce does take six to eight weeks to reach maturity. So we're a little ways off before we're gonna actually have lettuce. <laughs> what? Dan is standing there watching me and he's embarrassing me. Um, but now you've completely made me lose my train of thought. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, bye. Back down to the grow room with you. Okay, let's get back into the serious business of talking seeds. Um, I am not going to grow more than seven tomato plants because they do need to be potted up into one gallon pails and I don't want to fill my grow room with those. I have a limited amount of space in there and I usually start somewhere around 1500 seedlings. So I obviously need a lot of space. I'm going to be starting plants that will be going into the garden in February. So all of my woody herbs will be started in February, things like rosemary. Um, I'll also be doing celery and celeriac because they take a really long time to grow. Um, and then I'll be doing petunias towards the very end of February and some of the other slower growing flowers and then tomatoes, all of the tomatoes for my high tunnel by the second week of March. So I really don't wanna take up that space. However, I do really want some fresh tomatoes in early spring. That would be fantastic. Okay, let's get into our dwarf tomatoes that we're gonna plant. Okay, we're gonna start with, this is a dwarf beefsteak tomato called Broody Hen. So I'm going to plant three seeds per cell. The germination on Ash's tomato seeds are usually really, really good. So I don't wanna do too many, but I wanna make sure that I have at least a couple of each one and then I'll pick the strongest one that I'll actually pot up. So what I'm doing here, I should bring you down closer so that you can actually see. Let's do that, shall we? Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to pack down my soil a little bit. And I have already watered this soil because it was sitting in my greenhouse all summer, so it had dried out a ton. I'm gonna do the same thing with these, but I'm actually just gonna use the uh, tray itself to pack it down. Dan was laughing at me because when I was watering these, just the smell of the soil wafted up and I just about started crying because <laughs> it made me so happy. Oh my goodness, I love to garden. See how tiny these little seeds are. So the rule of thumb for planting seeds is to put them the depth that the seed is into the soil. So you obviously, for a little seed like this, you don't wanna bury it way down. So I'll see if I can show this to you. I don't know if you can see those two tiny little indents I put in the soil. So I will put one seed in each of these little holes and then I will cover them up with just enough soil to cover them. Normally what I do is use popsicle sticks for seed starting, but I don't have any popsicle sticks right now, so I'm just gonna make a little tag with some masking tape, like so, and I will mark it. 
Okay, let's do, we're going to do Venus next. Look at these little baby seeds. I am really excited about the gardening year this year. I feel like I've been gardening up here for, this will be going on my eighth summer in, in this particular gardening space. And I feel like I have this area dialed in now for all of its quirks because every single property you grow on, even if it's in, within the same zone, can have completely different issues. Dan just came in the door and said it's snowing like crazy outside. Okay, so it's 31, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, just above zero. So it is still so warm. And I know you friends of mine, especially in Australia that are in the middle of summer right now, always laugh when I say that it's warm when it's zero, but it is significantly warmer than negative 30. So I'll take it, zero is fine. But being in here, planting seeds when it's snowing like that outside is a very good feeling. Let's put all of these ones aside. Now we're going to do Arctic Rose, another beefsteak dwarf tomato. This one's new. Both of the beefsteak ones that I'm doing are new ones to me. All the other ones I have grown before. I'm gonna stick these little tags I'm making onto some little sticks. But for now, I just need to remember. I always say to myself, oh, I'll remember where I, what I planted there. And then if you've been following me for a while, you know every single summer, I have at least a few mystery plants that I didn't label or the labels got mixed up. That happens too, especially with transporting plants from the house out to the greenhouse and then into the garden. Okay, that one was Arctic Rose. If I could do one thing with this video, it would be to encourage every one of you that is able to plant something this year, anything. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a micro dwarf tomato or if it is microgreens or if it is sprouts, but something, grow something because um, goodness knows food is expensive right now. So even if you can offset your grocery bill, whoops, by a little bit, it's worth it. And seeds are still relatively inexpensive. I cannot wait to see little green things growing. Just like you guys come with me when I have a pregnant animal and they're gonna have babies and we go along with that, you guys can come along with me as my little baby sprouts grow. So this one is, I can't pronounce that one either. <laughs> so that one is a micro dwarf tomato, so a little tiny baby one. Okay, we have two more. I only wanted to do seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're gonna do terrific and marvelous. Tiny tomato. So two germinate tomatoes. They are heat loving plants. You do want it to be quite warm. So 20 degrees Celsius, uh, kind of minimum for germination. But even if your temperatures are a bit cooler than that, it'll just take a little bit longer for them to come up. They can come up as soon as three days after they're planted or as late as 10 days I've even had them come up. So don't get distressed if you do plant them and it's cool and they just take a while to, to make an appearance. And I do have a discount code for shipping on all of Ash's seeds from Ash's Heirloom Seeds, and I will put that down in the show notes for you. Okay, so I am going to do microgreens next, and we're going to do peas, and I'll bring you down here so you can see. So for microgreens, you're basically just going to spread your seeds out on your soil, depending, of course, on the types of seeds you're doing. So you use about two tablespoons worth of seeds for these pea seeds. They're supposed to be around half an inch apart, which mine never are, and it just works just fine. So spread them out a little bit, and then I'm going to push these into the soil, like so. 
and I have about an inch and a half worth of soil here. So we're just gonna just cover these seeds with soil because I kind of pushed them in like you saw. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grow these up till they're a couple of inches tall. They have a few leaves on them, just the baby leaves, and then we're going to cut it off. But I'll show you all of that once we get to that place. As you can see, this is really dry. So we're going to water it. I'm gonna show you what I use for watering. I use one of these two gallon sprayers to water. And why this is so fantastic is it's quite a fine mist. And for small seeds, it doesn't dislodge the seeds, especially for little tiny ones like petunias and tomato plants and things like that. But the other benefit is that I don't have running water in my grow room and this is two gallons of water. So I can fill this up and use it for a couple of applications and it has a nice long hose. This sprayer is even better than my last one, Dan. Is it? Yeah, because it has like a nice long um, hose on it. I love it. I got this sprayer from Princess Auto and I'll put a link to it down in the show notes for you. Yeah, and it has a little thing that I can put on my shoulder. I like it. It's pretty rad. I know, it's pretty nice. Can you hold that for me just so I can take off the lid here without causing an issue? Dan's running the saw downstairs. He was just letting us know that it might get a little bit noisy. Oh, oh that'll be a fun job. <laughs> Our, um, we have a spring and it's a gravity fed spring, but the box that holds kind of the water before it runs down to the house gets filled with silt. And when we went up and checked it back in September, was that October? I think it might've been October because it was still, it was cold. Um, it looked really good and we decided not to pump it. But now we're having regrets <laughs> because pumping it this time of year, ah, that is not fun. But we're getting a lot of silt in our water right now, which is a sign that it needs to be pumped out. Okay, I guess I don't need to fill this up all the way. Until it builds air pressure in there, turn the handle. Okay, this one is fancier than my last one. So it has the awesome option of being able to take off this sprayer spot part and uh, there's the water flow is a lot heavier. So that'll be good for when the plants are a little bit bigger, but for when it is like this, ooh, this one's nice, I like it. So you can see what I mean, it's a nice fine spray for not dislodging those little seeds. Obviously with these bigger pea seeds, it's not as big of a deal. And you can see some of the little seeds are poking up from the soil, that's fine. In this case, as long as you keep the soil evenly moist, it's not an issue. Our little tomato seeds watered. I'm going to plant a couple of radish seeds and these seeds along with a ton of other seeds were sent to me by Kathy who is a viewer here of my channel and she sent me, she's obviously watched my channel for a long time and knew exactly the kinds of seeds that I like to plant in my garden and she sent me enough, hi honey, to just about plant my entire garden this year. I was so grateful, it was wonderful. I hardly had to buy any seeds this year between the seeds I had from last year and the seeds that she sent me. You guys are honestly the nicest people and I am very, very grateful to each and every one of you. So now I'm just gonna plant two of these little seeds in here. Be fun to have some radishes in a little while. Radishes are one of those things, if you like them, that I would recommend growing as a first thing to grow if you're a new gardener because they are so easy to grow and they're really fast, so it's a quick, a quick reward. And if you don't like radishes, I would really encourage you to try them roasted. I'm not a huge radish fan and someone suggested that a couple of years ago and I tried, maybe even it was last summer, I don't remember, but I tried it and it completely changes the flavor of a radish. So all I'm doing with these seeds, I'm not gonna add any extra soil, I'm just kind of pushing them in a little bit, covering them up. 
And then over on this one, we'll do lettuce. And I'm just gonna sprinkle the lettuce seeds up and kind of do it like I would with microgreens and uh, just grow the lettuce up. So it's kind of like a baby lettuce, not a full head or full sized heads of lettuce. And then after we are done this, did anyone go and check on Dinah when you guys were outside? She, Claire did? Okay, we'll see what she reports back as far as how Dinah's doing. I have a ton of this mescaline mix. So this is a greens mix. It's a little, there's a couple of spicy varieties in here. So I'm gonna do half of this tray with this mix just because I have so many of them. And I need to get the seeds used up because these seeds are a couple years old now. And we're gonna do this one. It's a red leaf lettuce. And these ones also came from Kathy. So we're just sprinkling them nice and fine. So I'm just gonna put a fine sprinkle of soil over top of this because lettuce seeds are super tiny. Just giving them a little pack down and then we'll give them a water. This mist is so fine that it doesn't even move exposed lettuce seeds. Just gonna give this a little bit of a dampening before I put the top layer of soil on. Okay, my hands are dirty, my friends. There is soil on my hands. <laughs> oh, makes me happy. Would you be interested in me doing a seed video where I share all of the seeds that I'm planting? Because it would probably be fairly long and I wouldn't be able to put a lot of other kind of vloggy stuff in it. So let me know down in the comment section below if you do want me to do that and I will or we can just reserve that content for over on the website as far as like the lists and all of that. So let me know. I wanted to show you what we are doing for dinner tonight. We made some meatloaf earlier on today and Claire wants to try doing mashed potatoes using our canned potatoes downstairs. So I said she could give that a try. You wanna go grab some of those? Yeah, sure. How many jars do you do four jars? Yeah, I think, I think four jars would probably be good. I think what would be best is if we heated up, heated them up yeah. and added and added the milk and stuff while they're heating up on the stove and then trying to mash them that way because I do think they need to get a little bit softer before they're gonna be really mashable. So let's try that. We've right. done them roasted before um, in the oven and they're really good that way. I throw them in soup all the time and they're really good that way. They hold their shape really well, but I just don't know how they're gonna work mashed. We'll head out to the barn to, to check on Dinah and see how she's doing. I went out at what time is it now? 4.30, so it was probably around one, just after lunch to check on her. And she was fine, she was standing up. I got to give her a good scratch, and she, she was happy. Eating. Is she again? Though, like... Just kind of munching away. Yeah, usually an animal will go off feed when they are in active labor, and she's still eating. But we'll go down and take a peek on her, because I like to check on her during um, this kind of last phase before she's going to have her baby. Sure I can, honey. Um, at least every like four hours or so. Okay, before we head outside, I just wanted to share something that I am very excited about. I have been looking for a couple of seed companies that I can partner with in the United States that carry a lot of the same variety of seeds that I get from my Canadian companies. So West Coast Seeds is an example of a company that I buy probably 80%, maybe 85% of all of my seeds from, and I have done for years and they sell organic, heirloom, open pollinated, and all of that good stuff, seeds. But sadly, they aren't able to ship all of their seeds to the United States. They can ship quite a few, but not all of them. And this is an example, this paprika pepper, of a seed that I absolutely love. I grew these, loved them, raved about them all summer last year. And then when you guys from the States went to order these seeds, you weren't able to get them. So I have found two companies that are totally in line with my philosophy, with the philo similar philosophy to West Coast Seeds, organic seeds, heirloom, open pollinated, and all that good stuff. One of them is High Mowing Seed Company, and the other one is Seeds for Generations. They are both absolutely fabulous. I have really enjoyed connecting with both of them. I have seeds being shipped up here from them that I should be getting in the next couple weeks. So I'll be able to try them out, check germination rates and all of that. But because they come highly recommended by gardeners that I hold in high regard, 
I know that they're good companies. So I'm very excited about that because that means that when I mention seeds like these peppers, I can give you both a Canadian and an American option for purchasing, which is awesome. Okay, on that note, let's go outside, let's check on the pigs, and then we'll come up here and make some dinner. This is Miss Skittles, and we actually just got Skittles, a new heated cat house, and she is going to be very excited about it. It's adorable. Oh, has stopped. Hi, Maple. How are you, love? Hey, sweet girl. You want to come to the barn with me? Oh, she's a good girl. Good girl. Oh, does that feel good? Honestly, you guys, this is the nicest sow. She is so sweet. The nice thing about having her have been in this pen for a few weeks before she farrows, it's not my preference. I would prefer to be um, for her to be outside. But the nice thing about it is that she's super comfortable now here. And she has also chewed up her bedding. So it's really, really fine. Instead of big, long pieces of hay, it's just little uh, chewed up pieces of hay and it makes it a lot easier for the piglets to navigate around and through it when they're really tiny. So I like doing that if I can. Oh my goodness, look at this. This is the cutest little cat house. Oh my <laughs> Isn't that so cute? Good. That. She is gonna love it. And the nice thing is it's a little bit insulated too. Oh man, I think I have to buy Elvis one of these. This is just the cutest thing. And it even has little flap doors. Yeah, we're definitely gonna buy Elvis one. Look at this. Ah, little hay bales. Okay, that's adorable. Okay, little heated bed in there. Now, wait a minute. Oh, there is a little spot for the... Wow, this is really actually quite well constructed. I always get questions whenever I show our outside cats why they're not in the house. So we have an old cat, she's 11, and then we have a six-year-old cat and they get along really well. But whenever we have tried integrating any other cat, so Skittles, when we tried to integrate her into the house, um, our male house cat started peeing everywhere. We tried multiple litter boxes, all the tricks that you can think of, and nothing would work. Albus actually showed up here a couple of years ago in the barn and when we tried to have him in the house, the two male cats fought like crazy and tried to kill each other. In fact, they still do whenever our, our inside cats are inside outside, so they go outside sometimes. And whenever our male cat goes outside, they always have a huge fight. So the other thing, of course, is that we live on a farm. So we have mice and cats help to control the mouse population. But of course, we want them to be comfy. So we make sure that they have heated places to be. I think that this um, would obviously be pretty warm too because the walls are nice and thick and the roof is actually insulated. And then it has these flaps on it on the door. So I think I actually have to buy a couple more of these for my other barn cats because the one that we have in the barn is just kind of a homemade one. It does have a heated bed in it, but it's not near as cute or fancy as this one. I am absolutely addicted to that potato hash that I made day before yesterday. I accidentally left it in the oven for a little bit too long, but it kind of went crispy, like all the cheese on the bottom. And it is so delicious. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you want me to give it a try? It's all right. It's actually okay. pretty easy. You got it? Yeah. Now the question is, are we gonna be able to get it smooth and not pasty? You're not feeling skeptical? Trying to be positive. I'm feeling <laughs> skeptical here. It looks kind of chunky. <laughs> okay, time for a taste test on these potatoes. If you like potatoes that have a little bit of texture to them, or lumpy in other words, then I don't think you would mind these. The flavor is excellent. Kind of salty, sweet, garlicky, all of that. I would say in a pinch, this is good for mashed potatoes, but um, regular mashed potatoes with fresh potatoes, definitely better than this, but I think my kids will like them. They're not too bad. 
You could definitely use like an immersion blender or something like that to get these so that they are smooth. That would work. But actually I don't like whipped potatoes at all that are whipped like that. The texture of the starches in them I find kind of gets a little bit pasty when you do that. But um, so I'd rather have them with, with some chunks in them like this. Let's get the table cleared off guys. I'm doing some steamed mixed veggies to go with the meatloaf and the mashed potatoes. I just realized that we forgot to do the sprout, so we're gonna do that. While Claire is mashing up the garlic over there that smells amazing. So I have this fancy bancy lid. This is what a sprouting lid looks like. This is one that I got from West Coast Seeds. I'll show you somewhere around here. I have my other one that I've had for probably 15 years. Do you know where that is? These ones you can get at just about any health food store and they work really well too. Like I said, I've had it forever. Thank you. Okay, so for this, for doing the sprouts, you need to have a clean jar and I do have a more, more kind of thorough video on this somewhere in my library that I'll look up for you and put down in the show notes. My show notes are gonna be absolutely loaded in today's video. Okay, so we're gonna do around a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons of seeds in here and I'm doing organic alfalfa in a little bit of cold water. And I'll leave these to soak and then I'll strain out the water. And then for about between four to seven days, I'll rinse these seeds every, you know, three or four hours or kind of at breakfast, lunch, dinner, and bedtime until they're sprouted. But I will show you, I'll do another video in two days. So I'll show you where they're at then and then all the way up to the point where we're eating them. But I think sprouts are a fantastic way to be able to get some fresh greens into your diet, even if you don't garden. I just went downstairs. I was going to show you guys a peek at the grow room and where Dan's at with the grow room. But when I went downstairs just now, he said, no, please wait, I'm just about finished. So he wants to show you when it is all done. So that'll be coming up in either the next video or the video after that. I hope you enjoyed today's video, everyone. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.